Hello! This video will familiarize you with the dangers of elemental mercury. We will provide information on elemental mercury's health effects and how to respond to a mercury spill at your school. We'll help you locate mercury sources in your school and you will learn about safe, mercury-free alternatives. In addition to this video, ATSDR's Don't Mess With Mercury website is a great resource to learn more about mercury. Elemental mercury, often abbreviated by its chemical symbol HG, is present in many common items found at schools and homes. Your school might even have containers of mercury in science classrooms. Many mercury spills at schools also happen when students bring mercury from home to show friends. Because there may be mercury in your school, it's important that you know its characteristics. Elemental mercury is a shiny silver gray metal. It is the only metal that is a liquid at room temperature, which makes it both useful and dangerous. Useful because as a metal, it conducts electricity and as a liquid, it flows. So it can be used in ways other metals cannot. Mercury is dangerous because it's very toxic and should not be handled, swallowed, or breathed. When mercury is spilled, it flows in many directions. Its high surface tension causes it to form droplets and to break up into tiny beads that can roll into small cracks in spaces where they're hard to see. Mercury also is dangerous because it can vaporize. Once in the air, mercury vapor cannot be seen and has no odor, which means you could be breathing mercury vapors without even being aware of it. What's more, mercury doesn't go away. Once spilled, even tiny amounts can stay in the room for days or weeks, filling the air with its vapors. Mercury vapor is heavier than air and can build up near the floor in the area where the spill happened and in poorly ventilated rooms. Exposure to even a small amount of spilled mercury can cause a variety of health effects. The health effects of mercury depend on how much and how long you breathe in the vapors. When elemental mercury is spilled or a device containing mercury breaks, the spilled mercury will produce an invisible, odorless vapor that can make you sick. When mercury is heated or dispersed into tiny beads, it will vaporize very quickly and can be more dangerous. Exposure can last a long time if the spilled mercury is not cleaned up promptly and thoroughly. Breathing mercury vapors is the most common way to be exposed to elemental mercury and is the most harmful to your health. Very little mercury is absorbed from touching it. However, getting mercury on your skin or clothing increases the likelihood of spreading it and of inhaling vapors coming off of mercury stuck to your clothing. If mercury is swallowed, most of it passes through your body and very little is absorbed. With the exception of a broken compact fluorescent bulb, which has a minute amount of mercury, even a small spill, such as from a broken laboratory thermometer, can produce hazardous amounts of vapor if the room is small enough, warm enough, or people spend a good deal of time there. For most spills that are identified and cleaned up quickly, most people will be exposed to low levels of mercury vapor for only a short period of time. Health effects are unlikely, and those health effects will improve once people are no longer breathing the vapors that come off of the mercury spill. Health problems usually result from either long-term, low-level, or short-term, high-level mercury exposures. While mercury can impact many organs in the body, the main health effects are on the central nervous system, that is the brain, and on the kidneys. Health effects on the central nervous system include feeling anxious, acting shy, not sleeping well, loss of appetite, and feeling irritable. Pregnant women, infants, and children are especially sensitive to the harmful effects of elemental mercury because of their developing minds and bodies. This is why it's particularly important to identify students who've been exposed to mercury. In the cases of very high exposures, individuals may require testing for mercury levels in their body and medical care. But most spills that typically occur at schools, especially ones detected early and cleaned up properly, lead to short-term, low-level exposures that don't require testing 
or any medical treatment. Mercury spills have the potential to cause significant problems at schools and in people's homes. Spills can lead to significant property damage and loss when items are contaminated with mercury. While mercury can be removed from some items, other items must be thrown out and replaced. When mercury permeates porous materials such as found in carpeting and backpacks, it is either impossible to remove or the removal process itself damages the item. If a mercury spill is not identified quickly, students may unwittingly spread mercury contamination beyond school grounds. Mercury spill cleanup and the replacement of law school property and goods can cost the school a lot of money. The school day may be disrupted if parts of the school have to be closed off to allow cleanup. Costs may be associated with lost school days or in alternate classroom locations due to school closings. Let's hear from a school official who has experienced the consequences of a mercury spill. Our mercury spill happened on a Friday morning at one of the busiest high schools in the Omaha area. This particular school is and was mercury free. No environmental mercury in the science classrooms, no thermometers, barometers, or mercury switches. A student brought an unknown quantity of mercury to school. We were very lucky that one of the other students knew the dangers associated with mercury and told one of the administrative staff. As it was, the custodial staff recognized the beads of mercury, isolated the hallway, and wrapped the drinking fountain to prevent further use. It is unfortunate they forgot part of their training and used a vacuum as part of their cleanup procedure. But replacing that piece of equipment was far less costly than had the mercury been transferred to secondary locations. The mercury spill ultimately resulted in the cancellation of afternoon classes and evening activities and the dismissal of students about 1245. Weekend activities were put on hold until everyone was certain all the mercury had been found and cleaned up. Before students arrived on Monday morning, a staff member retested the area to verify it was safe for reoccupation. The same year as this spill, another high school very similar in size to ours experienced a mercury spill that cost that district hundreds of thousands of dollars. Even if you have eliminated all sources of elemental mercury at your school, and your school is mercury free, there is always a possibility that a student could bring mercury to your school and cause a spill. Planning and preparation can minimize the health and financial consequences resulting from a spill. ATSDR's Don't Mess With Mercury website provides information and resources that can help your school become mercury free. It can also help you develop a mercury spill response plan if a spill does occur. First, fill out a mercury contact sheet listing whom to contact should a spill occur at your school. Be sure school staff is trained to know the steps to follow when responding to a mercury spill. Another important upfront action your school can take is to make a mercury spill kit. A checklist found on the website lists the supplies that you need to include in the kit. Spill kits can only be used to clean up small spills, like spills that happen when a small thermometer or fluorescent tube breaks. If your school has a bigger spill, no one should try to use a spill kit to clean it up. That's a job for trained professionals only. Your actions as a school official on the scene of a mercury spill are critically important to reducing the spill's impact. First, instruct everyone to stay where they are, then quickly size up the amount and the area of the spill and identify the people who are potentially exposed to mercury. Second, tell everyone to move away from the spill as quickly as possible making sure that everyone avoids the spill area as they leave. Then those near or involved in the spill should have their shoes, clothing, or other items such as backpacks inspected for mercury. Leave any contaminated items in the spill area. Next, isolate or close off the room to minimize the spread of mercury vapors in the school. 
This action will include shutting air vents and closing doors and turning off the central air system to stop air circulation into and out of the spill area. Ventilate or air out the spill area as much as possible. Open windows and position fans to blow mercury vapors out of the building. Finally, never use a vacuum or broom to try to clean up the mercury. This breaks up mercury into small beads and will worsen the spread of the mercury. The size of a mercury spill is critical to determining how you respond to it. A small spill is one that you can clean up using your school's mercury spill kits. A large spill is one where you need to seek outside professional help to properly clean it up. If you are not sure whether a spill is small or large, call for professional help. Examples of mercury spills that are considered small are when a fluorescent light bulb, a small thermometer, or a similar object containing only a small amount of mercury breaks. Any larger amount of mercury spilled should be considered a large spill. However, keep in mind that even a small size spill can become a larger problem. Mercury tends to break into droplets when spilled, can spread easily, and can build up into tiny cracks, for example, between floor tiles. If the spill is not discovered right away, or there have been a number of people walking in the spill area potentially spreading the contamination, then it may be necessary to get professionals to help assess and clean up the spill. When a mercury spill occurs, especially one that is considered large, contact professionals who will provide guidance and technical support to clean it up. Keep in mind that if more than two tablespoons of mercury is spilled, the National Response Center must be notified. You should also contact the school's or school district's insurance carrier to see if mercury spill cleanup costs are covered. An important part of spill response planning and preparedness is getting to know the agencies and organizations that can assist in the event of a mercury spill. Call each agency or organization listed on the mercury contact sheet to identify the appropriate point of contact and discuss the support each can provide to you and your school if a spill occurs. EPA and or your state or local environmental agency can help you successfully complete a mercury cleanup and achieve the goal of protecting the health of students and school officials and get the school back in full use. It is important to hire contractors that have experience conducting mercury cleanups. If not done properly, the mercury contamination can be spread further, increasing the cost and time needed for the cleanup. Good, clear communication is important in the event of a mercury spill. Should a spill occur, students, school staff, parents, and community members will be concerned about any potential hazards posed by exposure to mercury, how it happened, what is being done, and what they need to do. Promptly inform the students and staff involved in and potentially affected by the spill. Give them information that enables them to act quickly to minimize the spread of mercury and to contain mercury contaminated shoes, clothing, and personal and school items. If those affected by the spill have already left school grounds, they may have tracked mercury into school buses, cars, their homes, and other places. If the spill is large enough that it requires closure of part or all of the school during the cleanup effort, people will need to know about alternate class schedules and locations. Emails, texts, phone calls, and social media posts may also be effective when reaching students and staff outside of school hours or when contacting parents or guardians. For example, you should provide clear instructions for collecting, bagging, and delivering potentially contaminated shoes, clothing, and personal items to the school so the items can be tested and disposed of properly if found to be contaminated. Our district is very fortunate to have a communications department that interacts with the media on behalf of the district. Upon arrival at the school, 
the district communication person and I met with the principal to discuss the cleanup response by both the fire department and district staff, the possible signs and symptoms of mercury exposure, and the potential exposure that was experienced by the students and staff given that short time frame. This provided enough information for the principal and the office staff to generate a letter to send home with the students, reassure the staff, and allow the district communication person to speak knowledgeably with the media. Having one person present dedicated to speaking with the media freed the principal from that task. One unanticipated communication issue the school administration had to handle was multiple phone calls from parents. The spill was directly adjacent to the cafeteria which is lined with floor to ceiling windows. As the students came down to the cafeteria for lunch, they sent pictures of the spill response to their parents. Elemental mercury has been widely used in commercial products. Knowing what mercury-containing products and devices are in your school and where they are located can be an important part of mercury spill prevention. The Mercury Audit and Follow-up Checklist provides simple instructions to guide you as you conduct your audit and inventory your school's mercury sources. When you do your audit, it's a good idea to also use a school map to make notes and mark the locations of sources of mercury. You might want to label some sources of mercury with tags that say danger, do not touch, and consider replacing and disposing of them. Keep your checklist and school map showing source locations in your mercury spill kit. It is also important to know that elemental mercury can be found at home in many of these same products and devices. Quite often, mercury spills at school are the result of students bringing mercury from home to show friends and to play with. Now that you have completed your mercury audit and know where all the sources of mercury are in your school, let's talk about replacing mercury-containing items with mercury-free or mercury-reduced alternative products and equipment. We'll also explore how to safely dispose of mercury-containing products and how to securely and safely store mercury-containing items that remain at your school. Make your school safer by making simple changes. For example, Replace mercury-containing thermometers and blood pressure meters with digital and other mercury-free devices. Here are a few examples of mercury-free switches and gauges that can replace older mercury-containing ones in your school's heating and cooling, engineering, and utility areas. And while there are no mercury-free replacements for fluorescent light bulbs, your school can invest in newer, more energy-efficient ones that contain less mercury than older models. Consider switching to LED lighting which is mercury-free and even more energy efficient than fluorescent light bulbs. Okay, you may ask, but can we replace elemental mercury that we use in our science classes? Good question. In fact, you may not have to use elemental mercury in your science laboratories. You can use other materials and place the mercury in some experiments. When you remove and or replace mercury-containing products in your school with mercury-free or mercury-reduced ones, be sure to dispose of the mercury-containing items properly. There are many state and local programs for recycling or disposing of items that contain mercury. Remember, because of mercury's dangers, specific steps must be followed to ensure safe disposal. Otherwise, you risk doing more harm than good. To keep your school safe, develop a policy and guidelines to manage mercury and mercury-containing items. Your school's mercury policy should establish protocols on how you will conduct many of the activities discussed in this video. Taking an inventory, using alternatives, preparing a spill kit, and disposing of mercury. This will help ensure that your school is protected and well prepared if a spill were ever to happen. Raising awareness and training staff about mercury should be part of the policy. 
The commitment to make and keep your school mercury free is a major driver to the success of school mercury policy. Use your school's website, Facebook, and Twitter to get the word out and let everyone know what they can do to support the effort. The school district provides mercury spill training for all custodial staff as part of their mandatory training, and each school is supplied with mercury amalgam. Reminders about the mercury spill procedures are published in the custodial newsletter. Preparing a plan to respond to a mercury spill and working with your staff is so important in the event you have a spill. As a district, most elemental mercury has been removed except for some mercury switches on old building equipment. That was not enough to prevent a spill from happening. Being prepared helped minimize the consequences of this incident. We have shared a lot of information here, so let's take a moment to review some important points. Mercury is a liquid metal that vaporizes and can disperse into tiny beads. Breathing mercury vapor can be harmful to your health. If a spill occurs at school, assess the spill, evacuate the spill area, isolate it from the rest of the school, ventilate the vapors to the outdoors, and do not sweep or vacuum. Decide if the spill is small and you can clean it up yourself, or if it is large and will require trained professionals to clean it up. Plan for dealing with the mercury spill before it happens. Prepare a mercury spill kit. Be sure school staff knows where that kit is located. Maintain an up-to-date contact list so you will know who to call in case of a spill. Minimize the risk of a spill by conducting a mercury audit and develop a mercury policy to replace mercury-containing products. Remember to safely store mercury-containing products until they can be replaced. Our aim is to help your school become and stay mercury-free. Go to ATSDR's Don't Mess With Mercury website for more detailed information and guidance. Thanks for watching. I hope that what you have learned today will help make your school safer by minimizing the chance of a mercury spill. Remember, don't mess with mercury, because mercury is anything but cool.